Hi everybody, this is Mr. Gottlob with another algebra video for you. Today I'd like to talk to you about the commutative, associative, and distributive properties, which are three properties that you probably use all the time in algebra but you may not realize it. just want to give you a name for them and uh, let you know how to recognize them when they're being put in use. The commutative property, you'll notice, has a root commuting and like going back and forth to your job. And the commutative property works like that for addition and multiplication. It goes back and forth. This is closed for our number system, so that means that 3 plus 5 is going to give you the same thing as 5 plus 3. Uh, 3 times 5 would be the same thing as 5 times 3. And it extends to variables. x plus y is the same thing as y plus x. And x times y is the same thing as y times x. You'll notice that in each of these scenarios, the order has changed. The order flips. Okay. That's how we know that that's the commutative property. You're going back and forth, or forth and back. I guess it depends on how you look at it. The next property I want to talk about is the associative property, which is like associating, or you know, with your group, your friends, people you work with, etc. And the associative property also works for addition and multiplication. That could be something like saying, uh, how about seven plus three plus x. I could group together the 7 and the 3, or if I knew what x was, I could group the 3 and the x together first for the addition. It's almost like saying, hey, there's three people out hanging out, two of them start talking, the one feels like a third wheel, and then suddenly the x grabs the 3's attention, they start talking, and the 7's kind of left hanging off to the side. Uh, you could do that for multiplication as well. You could say, how about uh, 5 times 7 times 2? You could multiply 7 and 2 first, or you could multiply 5 times 7 first, and then multiply the 2 after. You know, our brains don't multiply multiple numbers at once. They only multiply two numbers at a time, or they only add two numbers at a time. So your brain is associating the numbers that work the best for it when combining them and simplifying. So that's your associative property. Now you want to be careful, because people will sometimes see this, And say, oh, I see parentheses again. We must be talking about the associative property. But you'll notice in the associative property, the order doesn't change. 7, 3, x, 7, 3, x, 5, 7, 2, 5, 7, 2, x, 9, 7, 9, x, 7. The order changed. So this is really, pause for a second in case you want to yell it out. This is really the commutative property at work here because the order has flipped around, okay? The last one is the distributive property, which you've definitely seen before. It's distributing, it's giving out. Three times x plus seven can be rewritten as three times x plus three times seven or three x plus 21. It works over subtraction as well. You could say five times y minus two. Well, 5 times y is 5y, minus 5 times 2 is 10, or negative 10. So you end up with a completely different set of numbers than you had originally. Sometimes you'll see it backwards. Sometimes you'll see 8x minus 64, and then the next thing you see is 8 times x minus 8, and you just need to recognize, oh, okay, that was the distributive property. It's really factoring, but that's distributing in reverse. So it's the same thing, but that's what these forms look like. Your distributive property, your associative property, and your commutative property. Those are your three properties that we use very often in algebra. I hope that helps. We'll see you soon for a new video. Thanks.